Right, so I was about to uh, <clears throat> load up my camper when I decided to check out some of the water damage that it suffered and kind of jumped down the rabbit hole and started ripping crap out because she's rotten. Now yeah, we got a little further. I'm debating whether or not to take off this panel so I can change this light and see what's underneath. I'm gonna have to take off, take down the cupboards to get to this panel to get to that one. <clears throat> so I'm gonna clean up around here tonight. It's getting kind of late. I clean up these boards, get her prepped. Frame, I think, is salvageable even though it looks like shit. Um, I don't have a sander or anything, but I got a wire brush, so I'm gonna hit it with a wire brush, see what it looks like. So this is as far as we got. Get some holes and the water damage kind of stopped right about in this area. Still got some more prep to do. And got some 0.5 millimeter board and styrofoam insulation uh, all this was pretty black and moldy ran the dehumidifier in here for the past couple of days dried it out um, gonna run some caulking in some of the weak spots like there's some water getting through the seam and I'm gonna paint the frame with kills. Take care of the rest of the mold. And then get her all patched up. Alright, here we go. We got all the frame work painted with kills. Take care of all that mildew. We got all the old patch jobs that had happened over the years since the 1981s. So it's had quite a few dings. Patch that up with some foam sealant. And whoever redid this at whatever point drilled right through the frame, which I'm not too happy about. But also broke this, so I just filled that in with foam sealant insulation. Hit that crack with it as well. And because I had a whole can of it, I just I was just messing around and put it everywhere. Might have been a waste of five bucks, but five bucks worth of insulation. So we made a little progress here. <clears throat> Got all the insulation hung. Kind of cobbled the front together, but put a couple pieces backwards. But everything else is pretty good. Uh, the roof, I was able to add some extra supports and push the tin off of the frame so that it wasn't sunken in and pooling up. So now it has more of a crown and is shedding off um, rain a hell of a lot better. Plus I found a bunch of leaks and pinholes everywhere. And so I patched all those up and uh, double insulated over the roof where I could. Sealed uh, the outside where some of the other leaks were coming from. I was having a leak up in this corner. So I sealed from the outside. I was running the dehumidifier constantly to keep it dry in here while I was patching everything up. So before I got too far on closing up these walls, I thought I'd give you just a little look. So we're gonna wall everything else off, paint it. Well, so that's as far as we got now. Got the paneling in, hit it with spackle uh, just to seal it and gonna wait for that to dry out overnight. Maybe hit it with this dehumidifier. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I don't want it to dry too fast, so since we got since it's solstice, solstice 2019, we have a really long day here in Alaska. 
So I'll probably let it air dry for a while. All right. The Overland vehicle is <clears throat> my Overland rig. War Pig is her name. About as ready as she's going to be for this next round of two months of overlanding in Prince of Wales, Alaska. I'm going to get right to the camper. It's the 1981 Paris Valley. I just redid the inside. Took her down to the, all the way down to the frame. Patched it from the inside out and then on the outside as well. Redid the insulation. Hung the paneling. Painted the walls. Threw up this uh, reflective bubble wrap insulation stuff over the windows because it gets really bright here in Alaska. The sun comes up at 2.30 in the morning where, where I'm going. And uh, that ain't cool. It's just too bright. Plus it gets way, way freaking hot. So it's nice having that stuff to reflect it. We'll see how it works. So, we'll just get right into the camper here. Got these steps off of Amazon for a couple hundred bucks. Bolted it right to the... Uh, right to the tailgate. It's still a bit of a mess in here, but I'm leaving in a few days, so we're gonna call it done. Uh, this table was originally like a half moon table and is used for the bottom part of the bed. You just pull this off, pretty standard mounting mechanism that comes with all these campers. So this top pops off, fits right here on the lips. This stays right where it is. Battery bank is a little messy down there. I still gotta clean it up, but I have two six volt golf, uh, golf cart batteries uh, running in series, I believe, to make it 12 volt. I think series is what you call it. And the windows are nothing special. Just old ass windows. Um, this, I don't know. Well, by the time I rip this thing down, it look like this may be like a third or fourth rebuild of this thing. Um, redid the electrical because none of the lights worked, and now that's the only light that's hardwired. These are all battery operated LED. Same with this guy. This one's rechargeable. How I'm going to camp is I typically like sleeping down here because it's cooler, there's more space, more headroom than there is up in the cab over. Plus the cab over just gets really hot, really hot. I think it'll be better with this uh, insulation. And all this stuff is uh, just Velcroed on so I can take it off for air if I want. But we'll leave the cab over on for the most part made this little uh, insulation cab. This is the insulation that I used in the walls as well, and there's a reflective, um, kind of heat reflective uh, siding on the other side that looks kind of like this to bounce that sun back. Got a little 12 volt cigarette lighter here. I'll just keep my USB ports in. Uh, last year when I was bombing around the back roads of Prince of Wales, all these cupboards would fly open and shit would fly everywhere, so I just installed these little locking daily shenanigans here. Little locking mechanisms. And all of this was open, so I made some partitions. In the cupboards. So I got three cabinet spaces. This is the old lighting, might be original. I finally fixed this. There's a light bulb on this side that turns on when you plug it into uh, the 120 volt um, house outlet. This is just a regular old, uh, I got an LED 12 volt light in there. Picked up on Amazon. A little two burner stove. Got shit everywhere, gotta clean it, but it uh, runs off of a three pound tank I got on the outside. This is a 10 gallon sink, it's a hand pump. I don't really use it too much besides washing dishes. Um, it doesn't have a gray water tank, it just flows right out the back so I can cap it or not. So I just use it for like washing dishes or my hands or whatever. Tank is 
right in here. And we're gonna keep some extra cleaning supplies. My tactical fanny pack. Keeps my hunting license, fishing license, extra ammo, and a little uh, tackle box. This was a really shitty cooler that would not hold a bag of ice for 12 hours even. So I gutted it, took out the cooler, kept the door, and I reinforced the door because the mounting mechanism was completely different once the innards were out. Kind of remounted this and the latching mechanism here so that it closes. Uh, there was a suburban uh, furnace there, but it, it didn't work. I like four or five hundred bucks to replace and get up here in Alaska, so I just took it out. It doesn't really doesn't really matter too much. This thing stays cooking in the summertime, and I haven't really taken it out winter camping. But now that it's all redid, I think I might added a latch here. Uh, reinforced this cabinet because it was just kind of free floating and shit would fly everywhere. Uh, I got my little spice rack. Uh, this would always fall off too. I've had this camper for a couple of years and it's my first time redoing it was this year because I had some water damage. So now this is super solid. Remounted the paper towel here because it was over there. I uh, remounted the coat rack so it's nice and solid. And yeah, I have all the footage of um, the process. But I'm going to be leaving in a few days, so I'm not going to have enough time to edit everything. And besides, I don't have internet besides what's on my phone. So I'll have to get that to you in a couple of months when I come back. But I just wanted to get this video out so you can kind of see what, what I'm going to be living in for a couple of months this summer. Um, yeah, I have a, this will be my second summer living out of this thing in Prince of Wales and the Logan Roads. First summer, I did it in the back of my Chevy over there. I just had a little camper cap on it. That thing worked great. Had so much fun, decided to upgrade. And the truck is a 2001 GMC 3500 with an LB7 Duramax in it. Dually crew cab long bed. Makes the camper look really small. Spent the past year making upgrades on this as well. Uh, I had a brake line blowout when I got back to Juneau last year. I'm so glad it didn't break, uh, bust on the mountains, but I replaced all the hard lines with stainless steel. Stainless steel lines made by Dorman. I got a uh, video on my page. You can check it out if you want to see that. I got links and stuff to it. Um, put a nice AC Delco filter, fuel filter in it. AC Delco front to back, um, pads, rotors, and calipers. Got the KO2s, uh, 235, uh, 235-85 R16s. All the way around, and they do not rub. Even with the camper on it. Camera picks it up, but you got about a half inch on it. Upgraded the stock exhaust to four inch MBRP um, with the muffler. Sounds really good. Flows really nice. Got a lot of get up and go. Also, uh, put a fast lift pump on it. Put the cap filters on. This is the 95 gallon per hour flow rate. Works great. Uh, if you don't have one and you have a Duramax, you should definitely upgrade to one. You will not regret it at all. The rest of the exhaust. Bought it on Amazon for like $260. Came with everything you needed. It's pretty easy to bolt up. I'm just gonna roll with the seats down. Put a dog bed back here or something. 
these little JBL speakers in here just for extra sound. I took out the subwoofer for space and I don't I don't have a smaller replacement yet but I'm thinking about in the future putting a smaller one under the seat. Uh, but in the meantime I got JBLs. I think I got both these are JBLs. I believe those are JBLs. And then in the front doors I have these same ones. Cab, run on my fan, got a 500 watt uh, power inverter hardwired into the battery. Uh, this thing is pretty, pretty awesome, charges everything that I need. I got a 2000 water in the camper in that uh, battery bay, but it's a little overpowered for what I need it for. Um, just when it's idling, it tends to drain the battery. So, uh, this one is fine for what I do. You don't need to have it on to run the USB, which is how the fan's running right now. Um, but you can go through and it'll tell you different readouts. Um, I've ran power drills and saws through this thing and small heaters and it worked just fine. Um, you can also, instead of wiring it directly to the battery, it comes with a connection to plug it directly into one of these cigarette lighters, 12 volters, and you can run 150 watts instead of 500 watts. And that works out pretty good for charging. Old deck that I pulled out of my other truck, old Pioneer. Uh, then that didn't do anything too special besides put those little shades on. Under the hood, Under the hood I put the AFE stage two cold air intake. This thing's awesome. Sounds really good. Flows really good. I got a. Uh, I got other videos on all of this stuff too. If you want to take a more in-depth look on it, look at it and hear it. Uh, I also put the PPE valve on the wastegate. Um, I got a video on this as well. Essentially, it raises the psi threshold about 31 psi, and will uh, keep the waste gate closed longer, so you can use that power. Uh, put a turbo horn on here as well. It's a full three inch. I got an install video on there. You can check out. Sounds a lot better. You can actually hear it. And did the hydro boost. So I had a leak, busted the seal, and then while I was at it, changed the master cylinder. Got a video on that too. Threw some fresh paint on there, but that is my overlanding rig in a nutshell. Um, like I said, when I get back after this summer, I'll hit the old editing room and show you the uh, the build from the inside. And I just got this new phone and new data plan and everything, so I'm gonna try to pump out some videos like this as I go. So I can show you some cool overlanding in, in Alaska, how we do. Give you a look around. We'll do something with this guy a little later too. Put this Chevy 350 in there and torqued it out about 10 years ago. I'm thinking what do you guys think? I think I might do some videos and rip the 350 back out of it. Do a full rebuild. Port and polish the heads and put a new cam in it. And then if that goes well, I'm going to try to do the same thing with the Duramax. We'll see. Test my skills. Uh, one thing, I'm sure you guys will notice that I don't have that, which everyone else has and I really want. One of those exhaust fans so it gets a little hot in here but my buddy did give me this outdoor light it's magnetic it's 360 degrees it has an auto setting on and off so 
if there's anything walking around at night so light it up but summertime it's pretty light here so I can't imagine it'll get much use but I'm pretty happy to have it just the same So my hunting, camping rig, overlanding rig, we do a lot of 4 by 4 in I know some of you are probably wondering why I have such a small camper on such a big truck. Uh, lots of reasons. One, I was originally had this on my Chevy. This camper was made for like an S10, so the Chevy handle it great where I go. And I'm slowly upgrading, but one thing I realized about having a big truck and a small camper is that it's significantly easier to climb mountains and get through trails with a you know 800 pound unloaded camper. And you know, probably I'm, I'm guessing the truck gets loaded up to about 1500 to 2000 pounds with people, dogs, and gear when I got it fully loaded, but probably closer to 1500 when it's just myself, my dogs, my gear. Probably less than that, you know, because I got my guns and ammo and food and cooking utensils and shit. Maybe 13, I don't know. Either way, the truck handles it very nicely. It doesn't seem to care at all, especially having that big old diesel with all the nice fun parts on it. It just chugs along at 1400 RPMs all freaking day. So you'll get to see some of that here in a bit. Upgraded my living situation, so now I can really start working on stuff in the wintertime. Now that I got a garage. Anyways, this video's starting the trail on, so I'm going to leave you with this oop, shot of McGinnis Mountain in the back, if you can see it. There it is. Oh, McGinnis. That's where I live. That's my view. Anyways, hope to see you on the next one. Also, before I do, um... If you want to see uh, any of the installations on any of those parts, go ahead and peruse my channel. I got links to everything, and I kind of walk you through the process, trials, tribulations, tools to use. Pretty quick, straightforward, no bullshit. Just get her done. That's what it's all about, right? We're just here to have some fun, learn some things from each other. I know I've learned a lot from you guys. I'm watching your guys' YouTube channels, so. Here's me giving back. Until next time.